trucked up guys and gals. I tow, I tow. It's the only thing I know. I've been towing like a nutcase back and forth from my old house in the mountains to the storage facility to put everything in holding pattern for two and a half months while we live out our staycation until we get our new home. If you'd like to know what I'm talking about, well, I did a little video on it right here about our move. But here's something. I discovered five things that I'm not very happy about, really ticked me off actually with towing with the F-150 Lightning. There's actually six, but you and I know what the one is that everybody knows already, but there's five that you probably don't know. So let's just get trucked up and die right in. Well, the first one is a really tiny one, literally. Now, although these things have been around for years, and it's not exclusive to an electric truck, but that doesn't make it any less dumb. So, it seems like such a great setup. Everything you need is right here. Your seven point, your four point, that's your tire access for cranking down your spare underneath, full spare tire. Oh, looks fine and dandy. The design of the bumper is slightly different than the standard F-150, or what was traditionally an F-150 up until the 2022, 2023 year. But anyway, there is a glitch. Whether towing with a standard gas or diesel or an electric, that will drive you bonkers right here. So here are your two harness inputs. Here's your plugs, okay, there is your seven point. Excellent. But a lot of people use utility trailers. In fact, the number one use for a light duty truck is actually a four point harness right there. But do you see a problem? Yeah. Let's do that again, shall we? Oh, that seems to be quite tense. Now, if you're plugging in a four point, if you're trying to plug in a four point, point harness in here and then you get it wedged in it then takes the four wires because of course they're not protected on any design and they almost cinch them right off in fact i put in a brand new four point wiring harness and that took the green wire uh right off and i had to replace it no word of a lie the other thing is try taking the four point harness back out again without ripping your skin off. You have to do it with gloves for sure. But even then it's very difficult because they're tight and right there it'll grip and the, the way of pulling out a four point harness is from the top and the bottom. Let me show you. So this is your standard four point utility harness for utility trailers. There they are, there's your four points. It's pretty cheaply made most of them look something like this. Some are better made, some have good caps, but a lot of them are, well, junk. And you can see how that wiring's gone. Now you can actually wire it differently. This one's pulled to the side for a reason. Um, I'm gonna try it to the center, but I found that it even does more damage if I have all the wires kind of pulled to the center with the tape and given a little bit more slack. I'm gonna try that, but in every case, this thing gets chomped on by that piece with the lightning. And you'll notice that the grips for this are on the top and the bottom to pull it in and out, which of course you can't even grab when it's plugged in under that harness. That's just stupid. And then that's followed by, of course, number two, duh. The other thing that really sucks with this truck is its turning radius. If I crank this thing, I'm just dealing with a little tiny utility trailer. One of the big worries we have with a trailer, each trailer has a certain angle that until it starts hitting into the actual hitch itself or the design of where the, uh, the tongue is, there might be 45 degree supports. So there's different types of trailer designs and that determines your, your, your turning radius. Well, in this truck, it doesn't matter anyway because it sucks so bad. If I crank this thing, my turning radius is pretty terrible. In fact, I think out of all the electric trucks on the market, the F-150 Lightning 
is the worst. So you're, when you're trying to get into tight spaces with a trailer, this is problematic. Then comes along lucky number three. So folks, do you see a problem with these? They sure look nice, don't they? Look at them all. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six Tesla superchargers, all ready to go. Nobody here, vacant. Anytime you want, just pull on in. There's never a lineup. There's never a problem here getting yourself charging. Oh, but there's a problem. There's a problem. Do you see it? You see it? Yeah, there's absolutely no way to use these chargers with one of those. Yeah. But meanwhile, Tesla's building Cybertrucks like they're coming out of their buttocks. But hey, not a problem, right? Problem. If those Cybertrucks ever tow, they're never gonna be able to charge up without doing what I'm gonna do right now. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna unhook my trailer to charge. Can you believe it? Oh yeah, that's what we're doing. And my favorite, number four. So now that I got the truck all unhooked and I got the trailer parked over there, I can finally charge at the Tesla supercharger station. Oh, no I can't. No I can't because Ford has yet to send me my adapter that they promised me six months ago. Oh, they just loved milking it for all it was worth. All the promo videos came out. They contacted all the YouTube influencers. They said, oh, look, here's your free gift supercharger adapter. Too bad they haven't sent it to anybody. So even though we don't have pull-through chargers here in Canada yet at most of the superchargers, we are starting to see some of them being installed. So as that develops, we'll be able to do a lot more towing and hauling with both things like the Cybertruck and the F-150 Lightning as we have better opportunity to pull through with our chargers. However, in the meantime, that is a bit of a problem. You're always gonna have to unhook your trailer, but until we start to see those adapters show up for all non-Teslas, we're just not going to be able to take advantage of a better superior network in any case. And we're going to be waiting around for our flow chargers and other slow EV quote unquote fast chargers. Luckily, we have one of these. And that allows enough space to pull in a pretty long trailer, a super long trailer. I mean, if you were dealing with a 30 foot trailer, you'd still be having problems. But at least they thought this one through. They put in a stall where I can back up with no problems at all with a the trailer. There's a couple of these in Castlegar where I am currently residing. And I'll show you the other one that has a lot more benefits than this one, but also exposes one of those five problems we're gonna talk about shortly. But why go through all the trouble of hooking up to one of these when I've got a stall right here for my trailer with one of these? Well, the answer is quite simple. These charge at at least the maximum that my truck can handle. And my truck can't handle that much. 155 kilowatts is what it can handle. Whereas these can do well over 200. They've now got the new, I think they're V4s that are 350. My truck couldn't handle it anyway. But the one I'm currently hooked up to right over here, these babies, yeah, 50 kilowatt. Yes, they're three times the size. They're behemoths compared to the beautiful, elegant design of Tesla because they put the infrastructure in underground to make this work. These, on the other hand, didn't. They took the cheap, easy way and didn't put the underground infrastructure in, which means they need these massive behemoths to get the job done. The bad news is these charge per minute. So the slower they are, the more flow makes in profit because they charge at 50 kilowatt and they charge per minute, whereas these charge per kilowatt. So those don't penalize slower chargers. Everybody pays the same way. Democratize how much kilowatt hours you stuff into your batteries, whereas this well, if you have a slower system, you pay more. Faster system, you pay less. 
absolutely appalling. So supposedly that's changing. We'll see. But as you can see, I would have to sit here three to five times longer charging at these than I would at those, which means I want to charge at those like anyone with any common sense, which is why the other ones will likely won't be here much longer because nobody will use them. But there's one other problem that's going to drive you bonkers if you're towing with an EV truck. And that's this one. And what should be the final one? Number five. And here it is, our next problem. Finally, we get superchargers, fast chargers, that are actually fast. These run at 200 kilowatts. My truck, as we already discussed, is slow, only at 155 kilowatts, which means these are more than enough. The other thing is, there's more than enough room to pull in and pull out on every one of these units if you're pulling, pulling a trailer. Not maybe a 30-footer, but for your standard trailer or even an RV, you're able to get in and out with your camping trailer, no problem at all, and be able to charge. What's the problem? Well, all of these are broken down. This one's not operational, nor is this one. So that means that all of these chargers are not operating. So if you've made a long trip and you're pulling a trailer and you're wanting to uh, get yourself charged up fast, well, this particular city has a, the Tesla superchargers, it has the flow fast chargers that are dog slow, and these here at Chevron. So you'd think, wow, these are fast, these are great, but again, they're not operating. And where's the problem? Well, one of them is the infrastructure itself. You see that massive unit compared to a Tesla supercharger? You hear those fans running right now? That's because this charger is charging itself. Oh yeah, the reason? Because they're cheap. They didn't put in any underground infrastructure to make these things operate all the time. So if you have more than five or six vehicles come in here in a row, it drains the actual charger that's charging your vehicle, which brings you from 200 kilowatts down to like trickle charging level two levels, which is completely stupid and useless, but it's cheap. And this is what a lot of places are doing. They're not putting in the infrastructure up front to make this a workable proposition. And they're gonna pay for it eventually, big time, because they're gonna to have to replace all these units because they're gonna be useless. But why put in money now when you can push it off until later? Everything's being done backwards rather than building a super infrastructure up front that the vehicles have to catch up to, it's the other way around. So if you're wanting to tow with your electric truck, there's lots of options. And my next video is gonna be about the five things that I absolutely love about towing with this truck. But buyer beware and be prepared for blips and bumps until this all gets itself worked out. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you next time.